In the grand tapestry of human existence, worry has been a constant companion. From the primitive fears of our distant ancestors to the complex anxieties of modern life, we have all experienced the grip of worry at some point. But what if we told you that all this worrying throughout the annals of human history has not advanced our insights or improved our lives? In fact, as we delve into the uselessness of worrying, we find that it is, more often than not, a misuse of our precious energy. Worry, an inseparable facet of the human condition, deserves a closer examination. It is a sentiment that transcends time and culture, and it manifests itself in myriad ways throughout history. From the primal fears of our earliest ancestors to the complexities of the modern age, Worry has been our constant companion. We need to acknowledge that worry is not an anomaly. Instead, it is a natural part of our emotional landscape. In fact, traces of worry can be found not only in the human realm, but also in the animal kingdom. Animals exhibit behaviors that, to a certain extent, mirror our own worries. They display caution in the face of danger, and their survival instincts are honed to avoid potential threats. This shared characteristic suggests that worry is deeply ingrained in our evolutionary heritage, serving as an adaptive mechanism for self-preservation. Nevertheless, it is the manner in which we engage with worry that holds the key to understanding its usefulness or futility. According to ancient scholars, all things of genuine importance in life deserve deep consideration. However, they cautioned against the misallocation of our energies. Instead of allowing worry to consume us, they advocated for a more enlightened approach. The crux of their wisdom lies in the idea that fretting and fussing should not be the tools we employ to tackle life's challenges. Rather, we should resolve these issues with a spirit of internal enlightenment. This perspective encourages us to live our lives to the fullest making the most of our knowledge and abilities. When we encounter complex problems, this approach equips us with the inner resources needed to devise innovative solutions. It is a journey of continuous self-improvement where we rectify past shortcomings, cultivate new strengths, and become assets to ourselves and society at large. In ancient Egypt, a profound practice was developed that resonates with the very core of this concept. As part of their education, individuals who aspired to become physicians, priests or builders were required to study under the masters of their respective fields. When their education neared completion, they faced a unique task, preparing a dissertation. The essence of this practice remains relevant even today. Rather than being a headache-inducing exercise, the dissertation had a noble purpose. It compelled the graduate to articulate how they intended to employ their acquired knowledge for the common benefit of humanity. They had to explain how they would build schools, create communities, or provide public services. All living beings were to benefit from their knowledge, and this dedication was embodied in the most practical ways. This practice, born in ancient Egypt, ought to be rekindled, reminding us that education is an asset that must be dedicated to the greater good. Otherwise, its primary purpose remains unfulfilled. The concept of applying our knowledge and embracing responsibility offers profound insights into the uselessness of worrying. In this way, information can be used to shape the world around us, but its true value emerges when it is put to practical use for the benefit of society as a whole. However, the act of recording and dedicating knowledge is not only about academic or professional endeavors. It is a reminder that the application of our understanding can mitigate the anxieties and uncertainties that often accompany worry. Worry tends to thrive in the vacuum of inaction. It festers when our knowledge remains theoretical and disconnected from our daily lives. When we record our experiences, articulate our intentions and outline our plans for the common good, we take significant steps toward alleviating the grip of worry. This process provides a clear roadmap for how our knowledge can be harnessed to address real-world challenges 
and contribute positively to society. Furthermore, the act of dedication compels us to examine our motives. Are we driven solely by self-centered pursuits, such as financial gain or personal fame? The uselessness of worrying becomes even more evident when we realize that such pursuits often lead to disillusionment. When wealth or recognition is pursued without a genuine commitment to the common good, it can prove futile. This recognition serves as a wake-up call, encouraging us to redirect our energies toward endeavors that truly matter. Ultimately, the practice of recording and dedicating knowledge provides a tangible way to combat the paralyzing effects of worry. Our intentions turn into actionable plans when we see the tangible impact of our efforts on the world and worrying becomes increasingly pointless. By doing so, we reinforce the idea that we should devote our energy to constructive endeavors that enrich our lives and the lives of others, rather than wasting it on unproductive anxieties. In this way, we can navigate the complexities of existence with purpose and clarity, diminishing the power of worry in our lives. As we delve deeper into self-reflection, we encounter a multitude of thoughts, feelings, and beliefs that have taken residence within us. Some of these may be beneficial, serving as sources of motivation and inspiration. However, we also stumble upon elements that are of no value to us, burdensome relics of our past experiences. It is in these moments that we confront the futility of worry, for many of our anxieties are rooted in these obsolete, unproductive thoughts and emotions. The uselessness of worrying becomes strikingly evident when we realize that much of our mental energy is expended on concerns that serve no purpose in our lives. These worries, often fueled by irrational fears or past traumas, act as hindrances to our personal growth and happiness. By analyzing and understanding these worries, we gain the ability to release their hold on us. We recognize why they are worthless and how they undermine our well-being. However, there is a caveat to this process, the danger of excessive self-centeredness. If our journey of self-reflection is solely driven by a desire to boost our ego or financial success, we miss the point entirely. The true essence of self-understanding lies in uncovering the reasons behind our actions and motivations, irrespective of personal gain. It is not about self-indulgence, but about gaining insights that enable us to lead more fulfilling, purposeful lives. Accepting responsibility is a fundamental aspect of understanding the uselessness of worrying. As individuals, we are responsible for both the positive and negative consequences of our actions. This principle aligns with the universal law of cause and effect, where every action sets in motion a corresponding reaction. During this dynamic, we are confronted with the stark reality of worry's futility. Worry often thrives in the absence of accountability. When we fret over the outcomes of our actions, but refuse to accept the responsibility for them, we perpetuate a cycle of anxiety. We realize that worrying does nothing to affect the outcome of events once we realize that it's pointless to worry. Instead, it imprisons us in a state of helplessness, where we are mere spectators to the unfolding drama of our lives. Conversely, when individuals consciously accept the consequences of their actions, they gain a powerful tool for change. This recognition is not merely intellectual, but deeply experiential. It involves asking the crucial question, is it worth it? This question is a catalyst for transformation. We are forced to evaluate the true cost of our decisions, thereby dispelling the illusions that fuel our worries. By acknowledging the impact of our actions and accepting responsibility for them, we navigate life's challenges with a newfound clarity and a sense of empowerment, ultimately rendering the uselessness of worrying increasingly evident. In conclusion, the uselessness of worrying becomes apparent when we recognize the value of thoughtful reflection, dedication, and responsibility. In order to improve, we must record our experiences, both external and internal, and learn from them. 
When we go through this process, we learn that worrying, if left unchecked, can stifle our growth and prevent us from contributing to humanity's betterment. Instead, let us use our knowledge, our experiences, and our dedication to make the world a better place, one step at a time.